Hello everyone. Hi. Good evening. Um, I just want to come out and say that I do really believe that Michael Avenatti had something to do with this particular tape that's in question. Um, I believe it was altered and I believe it was altered by him or someone that he uh, was in cahoots with to alter that tape. And remember, he represented uh, Angelo Clary at one time. And Michael Avenatti, we know, is a corrupt attorney. He's a fallen attorney. Uh, he's been, you know, charged and sentenced. And um, he's getting his karma. And there may be more karma up on top of karma for him. It's really sad that he will go to great lengths to try to extort people out of money. And in the first tape, I didn't see it. Like I said before in my video earlier today, um... I've never watched it, but just listening to other people talk about it and that there was no audio on the first tape. So I do believe since there's audio on this tape, someone altered that tape and it even sounds like it's not real. It doesn't sound genuine and it's really, really sad that people can go to great lengths and extremes to extort people out of money to destroy someone's life and livelihood and they want to talk about people being victims right and they want to say that r kelly you know uh these young females or females were r kelly's victim but let me say something about this they made r kelly children indirectly victims when they interfered in his livelihood to be able to make money uh to be able to you know go perform at concerts they also violated other people's rights that um, have a right for freedom of expression, freedom of, you know, of speech, but freedom of expression to go and listen to, you know, um, singers and things like that at venues. Um, and I still go back. His rights were violated on so many levels. Now, do we believe that R. Kelly is a perfect man? No, none of us is perfect. We've all sinned and fallen short are the glory of God. We all have. No, not one is perfect. But when we look at the judicial system that we're dealing with, now I'm going to say some of the players in the judicial system that work for the judicial system. We have, you know, a judge that was definitely unfair in his trial because she supports the Me Too movement and the liberal feminists. You know that. And she doesn't realize that her behavior uh, is it, it's going to be looked upon and uh, it's already being looked upon and the fact is is that she does not fear God and she has a lack of regard for man and someone may say well how do you know that because of her behavior if you go and read Luke chapter 18 she had no fear of God because if she did she would not have been unfair and violated Mr. Kelly Wright's in his in that New York trial she would not have done that and two wrongs don't make a right. Three and four wrongs don't make a right. No. So therefore, when you're trying to, when you're breaking laws uh, and doing wrong to convict someone, that doesn't make a right. That's just like if you're driving and you're speeding and then you're just speeding, right? And then all of a sudden the cop starts doing 90 and you are only doing what, 45 in a 40 mile per hour zone. Breaking the law to catch someone doing five miles over the speed limit. And you're breaking the law yourself to try to correct someone else. And I just use that as a mere example. I'm not saying that speeding is good and speeding is okay. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is when you have people that have taken an oath in the judicial system to do their job effectively, correctly, and to have to follow standards. And that's why I labeled my video standards, because the judicial system that we're looking at with the players that's in here, these prosecutors, the judge, there's no standards. It's like a lack of standards to do the right thing. And so getting back to that video, Michael Avenatti, he is definitely corrupt. And he's so corrupt that we should not be shocked. Because if he went to the extreme of doing what he was trying to do with Nike, and he stole money from his client, then, uh, you know, he if he went to the extremes of what he did with his client, stole money from a disabled, I think disabled client, uh, you know, he withheld money he spent money that was not his to spend and he tried to extort nike you know come on then we should not be surprised 
at his level of, uh, excuse me, the extent that, he, excuse me, that he will go to, uh, to do things, you know, to break laws and trying to extort people out of money because R. Kelly, what, wouldn't give him money. So he tried to extort him. So he said he's going to make sure he never gets out of jail and all of this. So I would not put it past him that he didn't have something to do with altering that tape. I mean, it's just so sad. It is so sad. So very disheartening. But just, just it's shameful for us to have to call this our American judicial system. And... I, again, do not have any empathy or sympathy for fake accusers, uh, you know, I mean, excuse me, false, uh, uh, false, uh, you know, um, false, uh, fake victims that will bring false allegations. When we go back and look at, you know, doing the right thing, as I said earlier in, in that my video, doing the right thing, uh, even a baby knows right from wrong. Now, I can't remember that person's name, you know, about the this, this Facebook post. I saw it on Instagram, but it was a Facebook post that someone took a copy of. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know his name. It may be Ewell Brown, whoever was with Lisa Van Allen during the first trial for R. Kelly in Chicago. There was a post, and I believe in that post, I don't exactly recall everything it said, but it talked about something about trying to get this check. And I believe that he was meeting with Michael Avenatti and Kimberly Fox so that, that they can probably alter the tape so that they can have evidence, you know, to um, bring in the Chicago uh, case. And it's just so sad that you have people out here that are desperate. They are broke. They don't have anything going for themselves. And they are just crooks, criminals, extortioners. Uh, freaks, freaky deekies, uh, lying, vic uh, fake victims, uh, purging themselves, but they've been given immunity. Um, mothers participating, fathers participating. It's just so sad. It's, I mean, I actually, it's despicable. I mean, I really kind of don't have words. That's how bad it is. And I usually don't talk a lot about the R. Kelly case because I don't know a lot, but I've learned a lot since I've been listening to the transcripts and things like that. And, you know, I've learned a lot and I thank God, but I still don't know, will never know everything. And I'm sure, you know, there's people out here that can really, you know, break it down and get down with it and, and everything. And I salute those people that can do that, those YouTubers. Thank you for, you know, still supporting and doing the research and all of that. Um, but again, I have something to say. And so I come out to say it because it's just so bad. And, and when we see things that are like this, we have got to open up our mouths and say something. We do. Michael Avenatti, you are a fallen, disgraced attorney. You should, may you never practice again. May you never get another license or restored of your license because what you have done is just so corrupt that you cannot be trusted as an, a lawyer ever again with the behavior. Because even if you got convicted of trying to extort Nike and some clients, but you participating in someone else's case have nothing to do with you, but then you were representing a father that has a criminal background that always trying to bully people. We've seen the bully and we've seen how he's attacked other women, but yet and still he claims he's for victims. He claimed that he was trying to help people with his LLC he had. And at the end of the day, getting PPP loans. But then you are always talking about what you got. Nobody cares about what you have. If you worked hard for your worked hard, your life, you should have things without stealing committing crimes and selling drugs to other people to harm other people. Because if you're out here being a dope dealer and selling drugs, like more than just dope, you are hurting other people. And so, you know, it's sad. And then you have corrupt Michael Avenatti. Then you have the parents that participated and you have Miss Alice Clary that was up here talking about uh, on the PPP loan, how much she made a year. But if you made that kind of money a year, 
sister, you wouldn't have never had to go after R. Kelly and place your daughter in harm's way. We have to have some real talk out here. It is freedom of speech. It's not to victim shame anyone. It's not to be bullying anyone. But at the end of the day, we have got to look at the facts. And then you look at R.L., who you know that is Jane. And she's this. some of the stuff that she's saying is like, uh, that's coming from what? Some scripts from other books and other stuff. And it just sounds like all of this is just wrong. And if you, um, so traumatic, so traumatized, you would not be chasing a man that you say hurt you. You would have moved on and tried to get away from that man and never return again for them to get the same access to you if you were hurt before, traumatized to the extent that you say you were traumatized. And it's not just that, but this is the Andrea Kelly, uh, you know, you are a despicable, shameful wife, and you have really harmed your children in such a big way. Um, you did. And your granddaughter one day will grow up to see the nonsense of her grandfather because of what you all did. And how will you be able to tell your granddaughter you know, the truth, because you're going to have to tell the truth because it's going to be out there. Um, you know, it's just so sad. All of these people, not just even these people, but prior to that, you know, Geronda Pace and, you know, all of it, Kitty Jones and uh, the surviving R. Kelly and Faith Rogers and even her parents and the dad getting out there talking smack. That's not Christ-like, you know, definitely not Christ-like, not to hold your daughter accountable. And, it, and and I wonder how many people in his church know that his daughter is half naked and got an OnlyFans page. You know, I mean, like, really? But yet still, you know, all these people are just speaking out against this man. You know, everybody's against him. You know, it seems like the world is against R. Kelly. But R. Kelly, I want you to know that everybody in the world is not against you. Because we see the craziness, we see the lies, the perjury, the extortion, the criminal behavior. Um, you know, we see those things. The extortion, if I haven't said that, but we see a lot of things. And you, we see that you tried to protect the same people that you were around, that you cared about, that you did things for, and they turned on you. Do you not know that people do that on a regular basis, that when you've tried to help people, they turn on you? That's what they do. They'll turn on you out of envious. They'll turn on you, you know... Uh, when you stop giving them things, but I look at it like this and you know, we have to be forgiven. Yes. But we all, because we want to be set free if we forgive, but I look at it like this. If someone did so much for me, I would be thankful for the things that they did at the time they did it. I think that's what we have to look at. Excuse me. You all, I'm sitting in my car. I just got back and, uh, you know, but we should be thankful for the things that people have done for us. We shouldn't get so angry that we turn on people. We should be humble and thankful when people have done things for us. And I see a lot of people that lack humility. They lack. The, the people that's in this case, the, the ones that have gotten on the stand to testify against him, for, and they're, they, they're mad that this man, you know, um, excuse me, they're upset that the money stopped. But they should have known it was going to stop if he couldn't perform and he couldn't make his money. And none of y'all came out and, and spoke up for him, the ones that he helped. You you didn't come really come out and you wanted to uh, support him in private. You know, and this is not personal. This is business. And But I'll support you in private. Well, if you're somebody's friend, why be ashamed? Come out and support them. Because now you have to rely on the government, RL, for, you know, getting your Section 8. Um, and, and, you know, and things like that and other people that have to rely, you know, on other things now and to steal from other people because they're going to continue to be chasing something and it's never going to, uh, you know, it's never going to profit because they, um, because they're not getting it the right way. There was ulterior, uh, ulterior motives. And so, um, it's really sad. And, and it is hurtful. It, it definitely hurts when people, you know, stab you in your back and there's all these knives jabbing you, you know, and when you have a thorn in your side, that's painful, you know, and these people, they're backstabbers and 
is in the Bible about these backstabbers. Let's, let me get a drink. Excuse me. Thank you. It's in the Bible, all these backstabbers. They are backstabbers, but not just backstabbers. They, there's names for them in the Bible, extortioners and gossipers, people out here gossiping. It's not just the uh, accusers gossiping. It's other people gossiping, even the media gossips. You know, and it's unfortunate that we have so many people that just think they're perfect. But behind closed doors, they're probably doing a whole bunch of freaky deaky stuff uh, that we probably can't even pronounce the names of those freaky things. We probably, you know what I'm saying? And then they want to say, well, you know, do you know sin is sin? There's no level of sin. Sin is just sin, period. It's just sin. So if people think that having babies out of wedlock and have, you know what? fornication is sin if you are not married and you're having sex with someone that's fornication that's in the bible so even if it's something that you think is small your evil thoughts against someone is sin your mean looks against your co-worker is sin someone that you you know you just you know it's a lot of stuff that is sinful and we you know it is and people they they think that there's a level to sin no, sin is just sin. And I'm just making, saying some examples because people want to go, oh my God, he did so much wrong. But there are a lot of people doing so much wrong. But as black people, you have people attacking one black man. Um, One black man, you have people attacking. And, and it's unfortunate. So R. Kelly, hang in there, my brother. Don't give up. There are some people that care about your freedom. And, and we are people that care about justice. And I believe it's going to take a miracle and act from God. But, you know, don't think for one minute that, um, you know, that people don't care about you because there are people that care. And we want you to know that we care about you. And there is hope. Don't give up your hope. R. Kelly, don't give up your spot in the race. You still got a spot in that race, whether you behind prison walls or you get released, you still have a spot in the race. Don't give up because God uh, is there with you. He cares about your suffering. He cares about your struggles. Don't give up. God don't want you to give up, R. Kelly. And just know that there are people out here that know a lot of stuff that's coming out in those transcripts is in the trial. Um, and let God handle those people because God's going to handle those people. He's going to take care of those people, but he's going to restore you. I don't know when, but God's going to restore you. See, there's a mystery when it comes to God, but he takes care of his people and he's going to restore you. And for all the people that participated in this stuff that they've done to bring, you know, these charges against you, just hang in there, man. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You know, don't. And uh, you did say that you were, for, you know, you forgive people. Well, God is trying to help you with that so that you will not have, people will not have the same access to you like they had in the beginning. You know, because people had access to you that shouldn't have had access. When people have done you wrong in the past and you gave them access, don't give them access no more. When God delivers you from this situation, don't give these people access anymore. When he delivers you and, t and removes the garbage out of your life, Oh, let the trash man come by and pick it up. And I'm saying that to you, R. Kelly. I don't know if you ever hear this video. You don't know me. I'll probably never meet you. But I'm not that type of person. I'm just a person that's trying to speak out for the injustice that you are going through. And uh, I thank Bon Jing, uh, Mrs. Jennifer Bon Jing, for taking this case because it's very complex. It's a difficult case. It's complex. Uh, we lift her up in prayer. And we are just hoping that... Uh, something will change and that the jury that they have, they will be fair because we know a lot of the jury in the New York case was bought and paid for me Too movement jurors. And hopefully we will have some jurors that can see through all of this nonsense and say, no go. And the fact is that, you know, you are already sentenced. So hopefully your appeal will go through and maybe it needs to go to the Supreme court to get folks attention. And those same people, God's going to get him. I, I believe it in my heart because I know that God is a fair and just God. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's really hot in my car. I'm going to have to go. But God is a fair and just God. And so um, he's going to see to it that people reap what they sow.
they will reap what they sow. But hang in there, R. Kelly. And my people that you stopped by the channel, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for dropping by. God bless you all. And be safe out here, man. And, uh, you know, be safe. And uh, just have a very beautiful evening.